If you're actually good at solving algebra word problems, well, then you should be able to easily figure out the answer to this question. Let's take a look at it. So if a number is added to its square, the result is 90. Find the number. All right, so that is the question. And feel free to use a calculator. But if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the complete solution in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, I am uh, suggesting that you use algebra. And I don't want to give you too many hints here because I want you to kind of, you know, use your skills and have the full opportunity to solve this. But you definitely want to use algebra. So once again, the question is, if a number is added to its square, the result is 90. Find the number. All right, so let's take a look at the complete solution right now. All right, so let's get into the problem. Now, the first thing is, when it comes to any math word problem, I kind of have a rule. It's uh, for myself and what I suggest for my students. I call it kind of the rule of three, okay? Which means don't start doing anything. Uh, don't start writing any numbers down or variables down until you read the problem at least three times. So the first time, read the problem. Just relax, read the problem, get a sense of what's going on. Second time, start pulling in details. Start thinking, how am I going to solve this problem? Think about strategy. You know, think about different ways you can approach the problem. And then lastly, uh, the third time you read the problem, and by the way, this rule of three is a minimum time. You're going to have to probably read a problem even more than that. But at least the third time, make sure you understand the question. And the question here is we want to find the number, right? So if a number... Uh, is added to the, its square. So we're talking about some number, some unknown value. So already we're going to have to use algebra, right? So if a number is added to its square, okay, and hopefully you know uh, if 2 is squared, we're talking about 2 squared like that, right? So the result is 90. So a part of this problem is being able to translate verbal phrases into algebraic or variable equations, right? And this is, again, basic math skills, stuff that you learn like in the beginning of algebra. Of course, uh, this uh, situation is going to turn into a quadratic equation, but if you never master those basic things, you know, you're going to have difficulty with this type of stuff, right? So again, uh, whatever you don't understand, just make a little list, a little shopping list. You're like, I need to fix that. I need to fix this. I need to fix that. And then go ahead and work on getting those math skills. The worst thing you could do is just ignore what you don't understand. All right. So um, we're looking for some number, right? So find the number. So what we need is a variable to represent that number. So let's go ahead and assign the variable n. Now it could be x, y, doesn't make a difference. But uh, oftentimes it's a good idea uh, when you're looking for uh, you know, uh, you're solving for some concept, some noun in your word problem. If what you're looking for is a number that starts for n, might as well just let that variable be uh, equal to n. So we'll let n equal the number in question. All right, so what's the next step? Well, the next step is we have a variable. Now we need to construct an equation. We can't solve for this unknown value unless we have an equation. And let me show you this equation right now. Okay, so n squared plus n is equal to 90. So how did I get that? Well, now that I have my variable, what I'm going to do is start to translate the information in the problem uh, into an equation. So let's just start now. So if a number, now this number now is n, right? So if n is added to, so added if n, now this is the number, right, is added. So that's going to be plus to its square. What is a number squared? Well, it's going to be n squared. So a number n is added, so n plus n squared. The result, okay, is, anytime you see the word is, um, that's always the equal sign. So a number n plus, or number is added, so n plus uh, its square, n squared, so n plus n squared. 
is equal to 90. Okay, so what you should do, anytime you construct an equation, is double, triple check that, okay, this makes sense. A number n is added to its squared. The result here is 90. It makes sense. So once you are confident that, you, in fact, you um, have the right equation that models the situation, now what we have to do is focusing, or fo excuse me, focus on solving this equation. And again, I, I told you in the beginning of the video that this is a quadratic equation because this is a second degree polynomial. Okay, so now we have to switch our brain into thinking, you know, uh, you're kind of like sitting here going, hmm, how do I solve quadratic equations? What are all the different techniques? Well, you know, again, you're going to be thinking about taking the square root of both sides, factoring, uh, maybe you can use a quadratic formula. So you're just going to have to compartmentalize all the different phases of the problem. Okay, yeah, there is a lot uh, to know here, but nothing that you can't handle. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and talk about how to solve this quadratic equation. All right. So here is uh, the equation n squared plus n is equal to 90. So uh, what we want to do, this thing is equal to 90. Now, if you just had something like n squared is equal to 90. Well, we could just take the square root of both sides, but we have this n term, so we're not going to be able to do that. So what we need to do is set this entire uh, equation equal to zero. So I need to subtract 90 from both sides of the equation and write this thing in what we call standard form. Okay, so I have n squared plus n minus 90 is equal to zero. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description. But they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, now just for some of you out there, uh, uh, one is the coefficient of n, one or n squared, one is the coefficient of n, and then negative 90 obviously is the constant. So if you were going to use, let's say uh, you're looking at this and go, I need to use a quadratic formula. Uh, so your A would be equal to 1 and your B would be equal to 1 and your C would be equal to negative 90. But you don't want to just jump into the quadratic formula, right? What you want to do is look at this and ask yourself, can you factor? Okay, you always want to try to factor or attempt to factor. Now, you may not be able to factor a uh, quadratic trinomial, but you should always try, okay? Okay, so here, again, uh, we're talking about factoring. That's another hugely important skill in algebra, but I call this a case one quadratic trinomial. In other words, the coefficient, the leading coefficient is one. So a quick way we can check here is look at factors of negative 90, okay? So this is kind of going off on a tangent in terms of how to factor trinomials. This is a huge, big topic that you're going to have to, you know, really, um, again, master. But um, the main idea, one great approach is to look at factors of negative 90. Now, there's a ton of them, right? Uh, so negative 90, there's all sorts of factors. But you want to look for a pair of factors of negative 90 such that the sum adds up to this number right here this middle coefficient, which is a positive one. So we take a look here, negative nine times 10, that's negative 90, but when you add up negative nine plus 10, you get a positive one, which is this number right there, okay? So these right here, negative nine and 10 is what we need um, in our factors. In other words, this can be factored and the answer, okay, is the following, n minus nine, uh, parentheses n minus 9 parentheses n plus 10 all right so our quadratic trinomial n squared plus n minus 90 uh, can be factored into these uh, uh, two binomials right here now if you don't understand that uh, if you're like struggling with this let me just go ahead and just tell you right off the bat check out my algebra one course all right I go all into 
um, all aspects thoroughly, you know, much more um, uh, detailed uh, than I do on my YouTube channel. Although I do have a lot of great stuff on my YouTube channel that can help you out as well. But, you know, I would suggest that you just kind of go, you know, if you're really struggling, what you need is a lot of, um, you know, instruction and practice, okay? guided practice, which I do in my math help program. All right, so here is our uh, factors. So let's get back to the problem. Okay, so now that, that uh, uh, we were able to factor that trinomial, we have the factors n minus 9 times n plus 10 equal to 0. So we can use the zero product property. We're going to set each of these factors equal to 0. n minus 9 is equal to 0. n plus 10 is equal to 0. And then we're going to go ahead and solve each of these respective uh, little equations here. So n is equal to 9 and n is equal to negative 10. Of course, when you're solving a quadratic equation, okay, like this right here, you will always have two solutions, okay, no matter what. And of course, we have found our two solutions. Now, at this point, you're saying, wow, there's two answers to this uh, question. So if a number is added to its square, the result is uh, 90, find the number. And you're saying there's two answers. Well, yes, there is. Okay, let's actually check this uh, real quick. So let's talk about uh, negative 10 here, right? So negative 10, uh, the number negative 10 added to its square. So that would be negative 10 squared is 90. Well, let's check this, right? So negative 10 squared is 100 added to its uh, the number, which is negative 10. 100 plus negative 10 is, in fact, 90. It works out. How cool is that? All right, how about over here? Uh, a number, 9, added to its square, which would be 9 squared is 90. Well, 9 squared is 81, plus uh, the number, which, of course, is 9. 81 plus 9 is 90. See how awesome this is? See, math uh, really does work. You know, if you follow kind of the, you know, the concepts and you just build the skills and the disciplines, you can solve uh, problems with mathematics. That's the whole idea behind learning math, right? Uh, for some of you out there, you know, learning math is all about just passing your course so you can move on to bigger and better things. I totally get that. But if you're going to learn math, why not develop critical thinking skills uh, that you can apply to solve problems? And I can tell you right now, no matter what you choose to do later on in your career or if you are working right now in any particular career, you're going to be working with information, okay, data, either in your personal life or in your work life. Uh, so the better you're, uh, better are, um, uh, you know, the better you are equipped to work and manage information, i.e. data, okay, which includes mathematics, obviously, the better off you're going to be under any scenario. So always try to keep a good attitude about the uh, stuff you're learning. I know some of this stuff is like, I'll never do this ever in my lifetime. Well, you just never, never know. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.